Hello, our landing crew family. I've been meaning to do this video for eons, but I just haven't been able to sit down and go over all the questions. If you are new to this video or our channel, welcome. My name is Stephanie. We are a really big family. We're a family of eight. The dynamics and everything of our family can be very, very confusing. So I hope this video unconfuses things for you guys. My husband Lonnie and I, we have been married for 16 years now. I met him when I was 17. I was pregnant with Daniel already when we started dating. We ended up getting married not too long after that. We, we were young and not the best decision making skills, but we got married and here we are. We have um, six children. So we're just gonna go from oldest to youngest with the kids so you can kind of get to know them before we get into the frequently asked questions. So our oldest is Danielle. She's almost 16 years old. She's going into 11th grade this year. She has been diagnosed with ADHD. She's also been diagnosed with asthma since she was like two and then EOE, which is basically just an esophagus esophageal disorder. I'll put it on the screen. It makes it where white blood cells uh, build up in her esophagus and it can cause choking. It's not something that runs in any of our families. It's just something random that happened. The next child we have is Lonnie Jr. He is 14 years old and he is going into ninth grade this year. He has ADHD just because my husband and myself have it. And so I'm aware of the symptoms, but he's never been officially diagnosed because it never really interrupted with like his school life or really his daily life much. He's probably the child that you see least on the camera, which I will explain later. The next one is Noah. Noah was our first special needs kiddo. Uh, he is almost 13 years old, so almost a teenager. He is going into seventh grade technically this year, and he has been diagnosed with intellectual disability, autism spectrum disorder, mild to moderate hypotonia. So our four-year-old is Alexander, and we call him Lex. You will hardly ever hear us call him Alexander, but he's also our tubal reversal baby as after Noah, I got my tubes tied and seven years later, I decided to have a tubal reversal. He has been diagnosed with high functioning autism. I'm only giving the functioning labels just because I know a lot of people ask like where on the spectrum they fall. Alexander is definitely one of the kiddos that keep us busy. So he is a perfect example that functioning labels really don't mean a whole lot. <laughs> He's also been diagnosed with ADHD combined type as well. Our next child is Liam. Liam is the red curly haired kid, the only one in our family, but he is two and a half and he has been diagnosed with autism, uh, moderate to severe, and he's also been diagnosed with hypotonia, which is low muscle tone. Last but not least, we have Penelope. We call her Nelly, although we've been trying to call her Penelope more on a consistent basis, just so she doesn't get confused about her name because we are having issues with her responding to her name. She is 18 months old right now. She has also been diagnosed with autism, uh, severe, uh, level three across the board. So we're gonna move over to the frequently asked questions. I might've been forgetting some details about the kids, so if I remember something when editing, I'll put it on the screen. So question number one, which is a very popular question. What does our landing crew stand for? The first letter of each of the kids' names. That's why the land and landing is all capitalized. So Lonnie, Liam, Alexander, Noah, Nellie, and Dania. Number two. Is Danielle adopted? Danielle is not adopted, but the other question is, is what is her visitation like with her father? The visitation with her dad is that she spends one month of the summer with him and then we alternate holidays. So like this year, he has her for Thanksgiving. I have her for Christmas. Next year, I'll have her for Thanksgiving. He'll have her for Christmas. And that's just kind of how we, we've worked it. We've kind of let Danielle be the guide on what she wants to do as far as visitation. I also have a video about her dad that I will link below. Any videos that I feel is like really imperative and might explain this a little bit better than just this quick answer video, then I will link that. Uh, number three is why isn't Lonnie Jr. in more of the videos? And that is honestly because he's not camera happy. He does not enjoy being on the camera. There are many times that I will start vlogging. He's part of it. He asks me not to film him and I stop filming him and I don't include the footage. We are really, really big with trying to respect our kids' privacy as much as we can. There are periods when you might not see Noah or Danielle for a while and that's just because they didn't want to be in the vlogs. They didn't want to be on camera. So the next question is where is Danielle's cat? For her 15th birthday, we went and bought her this little kitty cat from the shelter. It only made like 
one or two appearances, but it has been remembered like crazy. When we lived in Florida, we had a next door neighbor that actually had a bunch of girls. And one day they were talking about how they wanted a cat. I asked them if they were serious because at this point we kind of realized that we were going to be moving to Colorado and there were some other factors going on that we're just not going to get into because it's not really imperative of the story but long story short we rehomed the cat to a wonderful neighbor with little girls and they love the kitty cat so 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 much the next question is when did the kids start talking Noah started talking pretty early on but they weren't words that we could understand. I remember that there were some phrases and words he would say that he would repeat from others that never made sense to us at the time. He would repeat them clearly, but then when he was trying to use his own words, he struggled with it and you couldn't really fully understand what he was saying. Um, so he did not start talking to where we could at least understand half of what he was saying until around close to the age five. Lex started talking around two and a half. He had about 10 functional words at that point and then he just woke up one day and started talking. Liam is still considered nonverbal. He does have a few words that he says and every now and then he will use them functionally, but they aren't consistent enough to be considered like functional words. The only word that I say he absolutely has that's functional is high and that's been pretty consistent. But this, there's been times like he said like no and go and then he just stopped saying them. So it's just kind of a progression and regression with him. So he's considered nonverbal. Uh, Penelope, our 18 month old, she is considered nonverbal as well. She does occasionally make the mm sound for babbling, but that is it. She doesn't have any words. However, she's only 18 months old. So our hopes are that as she gets older, she will be able to talk. Another question is which one used PEC, sign language, all of that. Lex picked up on a few of the signs, but he started talking before we really needed to implement any more. With Liam, we are in the middle of getting him to understand pecs and then he'll be going to a communication device in hopes that that kind of spurs up some more um, meaningful language and then penelope we are working on signs and pecs with her so the next question is a very common question especially lately as i've been doing a lot of autism and genetic centered videos which has attracted a lot of new people why did i continue having kids if I knew they were going to be autistic. I've explained this so many times over, but this is a FAQ video, so I'm going to explain it here. And I didn't know. Because Noah had three different chromosomal abnormalities, because our oldest two were typical, the geneticist that we went to, to kind of see, hey, can we have more children? What's our risk of having another special needs child? Uh, she told us that she thought it was probably just a fluke, um, given the fact that no one else in either side of our families had any special needs, anything like that. Um, given the fact that there were so many abnormalities um, that it seemed like it pr probably was just a random thing upon conception. So with that information, Alani and I decided to have another child, which was our now four-year-old Lex. Uh, Lex came out and was meeting all of his milestones. I mean, everything he was supposed to be doing, he did. Um, we did notice a little bit of like feeding issues, but kids are very, very picky anyway. Like kids can just be weird about things. So we didn't think anything of it. He was waving at 11 months, bringing me books at 12 months. Everything was good with him. I took him to his his 18 month appointment, but it was a couple months late. I think he was like 20 months old. And that's when the doctor kind of brought up some concerns with his language and then with the sensory. But by that point, I was already like almost eight, nine weeks pregnant with Liam. So there really wasn't anything for me to do about that. Um, Liam was born and we immediately knew that something was going on with him. At that point, we had no more plans of having children. So I was on birth control. I, I, People be giving me birth control comments all day long. I was on birth control. Lonnie was in the process of trying to figure out his insurance and a vasectomy. And I found out I was pregnant with Penelope when Liam was four months old. At that point, Lonnie got a vasectomy while I was pregnant. I've had some comments that I could have aborted Penelope. And you're completely right that that, that was a choice I had, but that was not a choice I was comfortable with. And I have absolutely no regrets. Number seven seven, eight. I, I don't even know why these are numbered. My curly hair routine. So it's, it's not curly right now, but I don't follow the curly girl method because I like straightening my hair too. So if you follow the curly girl method, it basically strips the silicone out of your hair and then it's not really good to like straighten your hair. So I basically just wash my hair, flip it around a couple times, 
put some cheap LA gear gel on it, flip it around some more, put some more gel. And when you think you, you, you have enough gel, put some more on there, girl. Let it dry for about five and a half minutes, not five, not six, but five and a half. And then like spray hairspray all over that. And then just cross your fingers and hope it looks good for the day. I'm being so serious right now. Number eight is where did I get this poster? So I got the frame at Hobby Lobby and I got the poster on a Facebook group and I am going to link it below. Number nine is Lonnie going back to work. He actually had his last interview today and it went really, really well. So we're just hoping he got the job. It sounds like he got the job. So we're just gonna kind of wait for the next step. Uh, the training classes, um, there's one in August and one in September. Number 10, will he get a second car? Uh, probably not anytime soon. I'm sure we will in the future, but all of our therapies are in home. And right now we're doing distance learning. So that's kind of not an issue. We have been a one vehicle family for a really, really, really long time. So we're just kind of used to it. It's really not that big of a deal. I just schedule any outside the house errands or appointments that need to be done on the days he is off during the week. The next question is our school plans with our autistic kids. So Noah has been homeschooled for the past four years. He was public schooled the first five, but then we had some issues and we we ended up pulling him out. We are now experimenting with putting him back in public school to see how it goes. If it goes great, then that's what he'll be in until he graduates or we'll homeschool him again. So it's, it's just kind of up in the air. I'm not sure. I think Lex, our four-year-old, is going to do amazing in public school. So right now we're keeping him home doing ABA therapy. And then once he's old enough for kindergarten, he'll go to kindergarten. And I think he's, he's going to do amazing with that. Uh, Liam and Penelope will probably end up going to a private autism school kind of in this area a, a little bit. It's a little bit of drive, but it is a uh, private autism school that has an early intervention program from the age two and a half till their seventh birthday. It's ABA based, so insurance will pay for it. Okay, so the next question is one that I usually don't address in any video. I will not approve any comments on this. So this is just for your information. It's the did we vaccinate? I have an entire video about my vaccine views and how I look at it. We have done everything from not vaccinating, delaying vaccines, vaccinating on schedule, and the end result is the same. The next question is, why do all of my kids have autism? Like, why did this happen? Our two oldest don't, but I know when everyone comes to a, a family as large of ours and four out of six has autism, it definitely raises some, some, some questions. Basically, it's this, as I have chromosome 15 and 16 abnormality, all my four youngest kids have been tested and they all have at least one or both of them. I'm not gonna go through each one. I've done so many genetic videos at this point. So just know the younger four that have autism have all been tested and they all do have the same abnormality that I share. I just recently found this out. I did not know this ahead of time. So this is definitely news to us as well. But for us, it's a genetic cause. We do not have the MTHFR, I think it's called factor, where it makes you more sensitive to vaccines. So that's not an issue for us either. Um, I'm not going to argue whether vaccines gave my kids autism or not, because even if it did, at the end of the day, I would still choose to vaccinate them. But if you're wanting to know more information about that, I have a video, I'll link it below. Next is why I started YouTube. So most people have some great answer or maybe they make up a great answer so it sounds good. Maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> But no, um, when I decided to get a tubal reversal, I did research on here and um, I really couldn't find anything about a tubal reversal journey. But there was a lot about like IVF, IUI, plenty of other, other trying to conceive paths. So I thought, well, why don't I make some informational videos for others? I never thought it was going to be a career. I never thought it was going to be a thing. I didn't even monetize. I didn't even know you you could monetize. That's why my first name was Tubal Reversal Mom, just because I needed to put something down and that sounded good. Um, I didn't know how to do thumbnails. I didn't know how to edit. I mean, I was literally as green as you could get as a creator. Once Alexander was born, I wanted to do updates because I was so like happy with him. And I briefly talked about one of my kids having autism and it just kind of blew up from there and i i liked how it felt to be able to help others and to help 
other moms not feel so alone. Another question is what I use for homeschooling for autism. So with math, we use math you see, spelling, spelling you see. And then with reading, we would use the simple books. It was like the level books. I've showed them on vlogs before, um, but we, we, we keep things pretty, pretty simple. Um, try not to make things too complicated, but Matthew C has probably been the best curriculum for us. We have tried many different curriculums with Noah. Many things have been suggested, but Noah learned in a very different way. Like he's never been able to learn reading and spelling through the phonics way of sounding things out. It's always been sight words and memory with him. The next question is, what is the coin dropping sound? basically when I started my first channel I just made the most basic intro ever. We were doing Lexus Nursery in like a rustic wooden theme and so I was obsessed with wood and I was just trying to look for a sound effect and it was something like coin dropping on wood and I've kept it because other than that and my email address is the only thing that really still ties me to Tuple Reversal Mom. I think it's important to remember where you came from. And so we will always have the coin dropping sound. The next question is how I manage such a busy schedule. Like how do I keep up with all of these appointments? Because we have a lot of therapies and that's not even taking into account that Liam's about to start ABA and who knows how many hours he's gonna get. I do it in my iPhone uh, calendar and I just make sure to put everything in because if I don't put it in my phone, even something simple, like Danielle has a nail appointment tomorrow at the salon and I put it in my calendar so I know that it's there because I will forget. It's happened so many times, I just completely forget it's there because it's not in my phone. So the next question is what do we love most about college? Colorado. Obviously, we love that we can get all of our kids the services and the therapies and all the help that they are going to need now and as they grow older. But as far as the area, there's so many things I love about this area, but I definitely love the weather. Like we are almost in August and yesterday was in the 60s and it just felt so good outside. I might change my mind by this winter, but as right now, we absolutely are loving it. Um, I love that everywhere we drive is just mountain scenery. It's beautiful. I like the, the people here. Everyone it's kind of like a community. Everyone wants to help everyone out. I've had such a good experience here. I know not everyone has had this same experience in Colorado, but my, my experience is amazing here and we will never move out of Colorado. I know that's a question too, is like, would we ever leave and no. The next question is why won't you cut the boy's hair? So Lonnie Jr., he just likes the top of his hair longer. Noah, we would keep it longer just because we were giving the haircuts and it was so hard for him. But now he's to a point where he can go to the salon. So that makes it easier. So Lonnie and Noah isn't intentional. Um, Lex, we've always just loved long hair on him. We loved how it looks. And now he's at an age to say whether he likes his hair or not. Um, another question is, can he see through his hair? And he definitely can. I make sure now to keep his bangs pretty short. I know it's time to cut his hair when he's like pulling back his bangs. I was like, okay, let's go trim it. So I've gotten pretty good about doing that. So it's, it's not in his eyes and it's not prohibiting him from seeing or anything like that. Um, Liam, I will never cut his locks of curls and I don't care what anyone says. They are adorable. And they are stained. The next two questions are kind of, I don't know, sensitive, no one's business, I don't know but I'm gonna answer them. One of them is, do we have plans if something happens to us? We have plans as much as, as anyone can or does, but that is why Lonnie and I work so hard is because we do have to prepare for a future for our kids that other parents probably don't have to and we have more than one child that it affects. The last one is, are the kids okay with posting about them? Some things I post about them. So with Noah, it's pretty easy to ask him if he's okay with something. If it's something that I don't think Noah fully understands, then we make the choice for him. For example, we just did his IEP meeting and I didn't share specific things of that even though I knew he'd probably agree to it because I knew he didn't fully understand it. So that's kind of how we go from there. Our babies obviously cannot give 100% informed consent. Um, so I can just go off of what I would feel comfortable sharing about my older kids who are typical and about how I feel about it, how Noah has felt about it in the past and just make our best choice. If they get older and they are able to voice and say, hey mom, I don't want this stuff on at all, then I would remove it. But I am also very careful about what I share and how I share it. 
Um, as you guys notice, I really don't share a lot of potty training things, even with Lex. It's just not something that's appropriate. Um, I don't share a lot of the rough moments that we have with Liam and Lex and Noah. It kind of leaves people thinking that we don't have it that bad, that my kids really aren't that severe and that's okay. We've gotten many comments. There's other channels where their, their children are clearly more severe and that's because I'm not gonna include everything. So I kind of use the thing, would I be comfortable if my mom would have shared that about me when I was that age? And we just kind of go from there. There are some things I share and maybe other people don't agree with it. Being a YouTuber with kids is hard to decide what to share and what not. Being a YouTuber with special needs kids is so hard because it's so hard to ride that line. I don't always get it perfect, but I do the best I absolutely can. That is it. I hope this answered all of your questions. I'm sorry if this video is a hot mess. Some of these were a little bit hard to kind of step around. Some of them are a little bit touchy, but I hope these answer as many questions as possible. If you guys have any other questions that you want me to address, definitely leave it below. I will be leaving a lot of video links. So if you're wanting more of a, a detailed answer, definitely check out those links and we will see you guys tomorrow. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be the heading out to see ya and leave the rest behind.